National Guard. Uh, Hurricane Milton, when we were here yesterday morning, said this is a tropical storm, might become a hurricane yesterday, but probably by today, and it became a hurricane very quickly. And so not only is it a hurricane, uh, it's already a major hurricane, and it's now a Category 4 hurricane with maximum sustained winds at 150 miles per hour. It is expected to make landfall on the west coast of Florida uh, sometime between Wednesday evening or perhaps even very early on Thursday. This has gone slower than the projections were in terms of the uh, how it's moving towards Florida. And if that continues, it's going to push back when landfall will happen. Of course, you can see impacts prior to the eyewall making landfall. We have made a pre-landfall declaration request to FEMA for support, and Kevin has been working with the administrator, and we anticipate positive approval on that. We have 51 counties in Florida currently under a state of emergency. The executive order that I signed over the weekend uh, also orders all disaster debris management sites and landfills to be open 24-7 in the uh, lead-up to Hurricane Milton. We had a lot of debris left from Hurricane Helene on Florida's Gulf Coast. Uh, that creates a huge hazard uh, if you have a major hurricane hit in that area uh, this week. So we've marshaled state assets to be able to help with that mission, and uh, we're going to continue to do that until it's uh, safe, uh, until it's no longer safe to do so. So we do have a Category 4 hurricane. Uh, it is currently located 745 miles west, southwest of Tampa. Uh, it has not moved terribly quickly, but that obviously could change going forward. Storm surge watch has been issued for the Florida Gulf Coast from mainland Monroe County northward to the Suwannee River, the Dixie-Levy County line. Uh, 8 to 12 feet peak storm surge is potential for northern Pinellas all the way down to Charlotte, including in Tampa Bay. 5 to 10 feet peak sur uh, storm surge is possible from Yankee Town southward to the Pasco-Pinellas County line and from Inglewood southward to Bonita Beach, including Charlotte Harbor. Hurricane watches have been issued for portions of West Central Florida and Florida's Nature Coast. Tropical storm watches extend further south and north through southwest Florida and the Keys uh, and along portions of the Florida Panhandle. Vision of Emergency Management is busy facilitating hundreds of resource requests from communities as we prepare for the impacts. Uh, we've already set, uh, sent major truckloads of food and water to Central Florida in preparation for points of distribution sites after the storm. We're also coordinating the deployment of more than 2,000 feet of flood protection systems uh, and prioritizing critical infrastructure like hospitals, wastewater treatment facilities, and electrical infrastructure. We've deployed a flood barrier around a water pumping station in Bradenton, a fire station in Hillsborough, and more en route uh, to the, the courthouse in Charlotte County, hospital in Kissimmee, master pump station in St. Pete, and a community resource center in Hernando County. We've also deployed generators uh, to support special needs sheltering operations. Uh, and of course, Starlink Internet, uh, all counties uh, have access to that, and we're deploying more as needed. More than 200 ambulances and more than 30 paratransits are in Central Florida footprint, ready to support first responder operations. And as I previously noted, we've ramped up our support of debris removal. That's a 24-7 round-the-clock mission. The state of Florida is amassing significant amount of fuel reserves ahead of Milton, and we're staging it to be utilized as needed. These quantities include 415,000 gallons of diesel, 389,000 gallons of gasoline, and an additional 1.5 million gallons of both diesel and gasoline are currently en route. I know there's different things that are being said, but all fuel continues to arrive at Florida ports. There has not been an interruption of that. I know people are going to fill up their gas tanks, which is a good thing. Uh, there's more lines than, than maybe th that we're used to on some of these, uh, but there has not been an interruption in fuel deliveries, uh, and all the ports um, are checked in on that. Local officials and their vendors must continue debris removal efforts for those areas that are in the eye, a potential path of this storm. My executive order requires debris landfill and dump sites to remain open 24-7 
to accept debris from Hurricane Helene. We need as much of this debris picked up as possible. Uh, this creates a, a safety hazard, and it also will increase the damage that Milton could do uh, with flying debris. And all local entities should comply with this order and work around the clock to accomplish this mission. We have uh, deployed major assets to help. But yet, you know, last night in Pinellas County, there were 300 vehicles. Some of them were state vehicles, but also a lot of private uh, pickup trucks and vehicles who were bringing debris. As they, That's helpful. They should be doing that. Uh, and yet, uh, the, one of the gates was locked. There was no one manning it. And so we had this massive line of cars waiting to drop off debris, which is which is a good thing. And so Florida Highway Patrol basically took matters into their own hands, uh, fastened some some rope to a couple pickup trucks to the gate, and busted the gate open. And then those those uh, trucks were able to go in and, and unload the debris. We don't have time for bureaucracy and red tape. Uh, we have to get the job done. And the effort that Jared Perdue and Kevin's team have made in helping uh, get the debris off and supplementing the, the local efforts has been incredible. We have noticed uh, since the weekend in the order, you have seen some more vendors out there. I know City of St. Petersburg has been working hard to get the debris out, and that's a great thing. And they're working, I think, uh, well. Uh, but these debris sites need to be open, and we're going to ensure that to be able to do. So just in the last 24 hours, uh, the state has done almost 500 truckloads of debris, totaling 9,000 cubic yards. So that's just from the barrier islands in Pinellas County bringing to the debris landfills. Uh, we have over 200 state assets, dump trucks, other types of trucks and vehicles, to be able to do. But keeping it 24-7 is important. We absolutely encourage private citizens to have the debris and, and bring it in. That's helping the mission. Can't get bogged down in bureaucracy on this. The debris mission is going to continue uh, until it's no longer safe to do so. Clearly, we're going to be able to work all the way through today uh, and probably all the way through tomorrow, given that the storm's likely not to uh, make landfall till later on Wednesday, and that could even get pushed back even further. So we've made a big dent in this. Uh, I know folks on the ground locally in those barrier islands and places like Manatee and Pinellas have been working very hard, but, but let's get this done. Let's get as much of that debris removed as humanly possible, and let's work 24-7 to be able to do it. Uh, so we have right now, just in the debris mission, we have 800 National Guardsmen that are also deployed helping our state agencies. We currently have 5,000 Guardsmen that are mobilized for the response to this storm, and we have more than 3,000 additional Guardsmen who will be mobilized prior to landfall. The National Guard is also deploying heavy equipment to assist with debris removal, including Army and Air Force horizontal construction units, tactical high-water vehicles, dump trucks, and front-end loaders. Linemen and power re restoration uh, resources are being marshaled in advance of the storm. This is